Hi, everybody. So let me first check if this works. All right, awesome. So my name is Min Kim, and I am one of the founders of a project called Icon. And Icon is a public blockchain project that started in South Korea, but now we're starting to build a truly global blockchain network. If you think about a lot of the blockchain projects that are out there, they're very focused on the technology aspect of it. And ICON is no different. However, one small thing that we're actually doing a little bit differently is that we are a little bit more focused on the usability and the user adoption of the blockchain technology. Today, I would like to cover talk about, give an insight on how the blockchain industry is transitioning, how it's evolving. But I would also like to talk about what ICON is doing to contribute to this space. So let's start off with a big picture in mind. On one end, where we're currently at, we have blockchain operability. And think about it as we are moving from operability and transitioning to the state of blockchain interoperability. Now to get to that state, we have many, many challenges ahead of us in terms of technology and adoption. But history has shown us throughout time and time again that when you have enough capital at stake, so a lot of money flowing into this blockchain technology currently, and when you have enough smart people working together, the human beings, we tend to solve a lot of, a lot of hard problems. And I believe blockchain is no different. A lot of you guys might know what is already happening in this space, uh, the brief history for the, uh, for the past couple of years. I myself, I started my, uh, getting into the blockchain space in 2015 when I first joined a company called Daily Financial Group. We built one of the largest fintech companies in South Korea. And we had one of this ex one asset called Coin One. It's an exchange. Back then, it was a small exchange, but we grew it to one of the largest exchanges in the world. That was my first time when I started learning about the blockchain technology, and I convinced our executives to start a blockchain technology that focused on enterprises. And that's how we've incubated a company called Icon Loop. And about a year ago, we thought we had a lot to contribute to the public blockchain space as well. So we started the ICON project. So if you look at back in the days in 2015, enterprise blockchain was the new rage, but it has died down quite a bit. But on the other hand, you see ICO projects come into play and that you have a lot of exchanges that are entering the space today. So when you look at it, sort of the law of economics is at play here, where exchanges are highly profitable, so you see a lot of new competitors coming into this space. And what these new competitors are doing is they're trying to differentiate themselves with niche products or new type of uh, models. So for example, um, a lot of jurisdictions are now giving out licenses and these exchanges are applying for them. You just had a panel up here talking about security tokens, and that's been the talk uh, around the world. And then you have new models, and some of you guys might be familiar with Fcoin and transmining, uh, transmining fee model. Um, so there are some new type of business models that's coming into play. And what's been exciting for us especially is that a lot of the exchanges want to partner with new type of smart contract platforms like ICON. So we see ERC-20 has been the dominant uh, platform for exchanges, but a lot of these exchanges are now thinking about ways to differentiate and partner with other type of different uh, smart, smart contract platforms. So all in all, we feel there are a lot of tokens and a lot of innovation happening, and having more exchanges is actually beneficial to the entire industry. So a lot of capital has been flowing in into a variety of tokens. But out of the tokens, a lot of big portion of that has been going to what you call smart contract platforms, or some people call it uh, first layer or base layer protocol. 
where dApp companies could build uh, applications on top of. And what's been, a lot of people come and ask me, so there are so many smart contract platforms today. How are you gonna compete? How do you see this industry evolving? And I kind of have two theories. Uh, since I've been in the technology industry for about 15 years now, and so seen many, many industries go through the same cycle. On one end, we have the global theory where I like to use the analogy of uh, Apple, uh, Play, Apple App Stores and Google Play Stores, where you have one or two players basically dominate the global market. And Ethereum and EOS might be a good example of where, how that trend has been going. And there's some very, very strong arguments there where as a smart contract platform, it's a software and software is highly, highly scalable. And you're starting to see global developers come together and build on top of these platforms. But on the other end, you have more of a regional uh, theory where I like to use analogy of telecom players, where you have one or two players basically dominate a specific country or specific region. And Icon is an example of that. And of course, I'm a little bit biased because this is how we are approaching the industry and our strategy. But we see a lot of friction when it comes to DAP distribution, a lot of friction when it comes to um, you know, lack of education and the technology infrastructure itself. So the way we're thinking about it is we want to work with different partners to collaborate and really find a usability, get that user adoption before going global. And enterprise blockchain has been cooling down a lot recently. And because we're in the enterprise blockchain space as well, there are a couple of problems that I see. One is that the enterprises themselves, historically they like to, they're used to owning IP. They're used to filing for patents or having control over their software. So like the blockchain model or sharing a ledger with other partners or competitor and convincing them to do so has been really, really challenging and difficult. Secondly, there's also a problem with getting enterprises to pay for a nascent technology like blockchain. But we see this trend sort of changing as well at, the, at this point where we see companies like IBM starting to adopt existing uh, blockchains like uh, Stellar, at least experimenting with it. And then we see large corporations, tech companies like Line, getting into joint venture with Icon so that they could start experimenting by creating their own blockchain and building their own dApps. So overall, we feel that enterprises are starting to notice the benefits of blockchain and cryptocurrencies and doing various experimentation, which is very, very positive in this industry. The other positive aspect of it, and we see regulators or governments starting to uh, really push the adoption side or the test side, where we're, they're creating uh, grant programs and incentives for enterprises to start doing tests and use blockchain for their own businesses. And Korea and Singapore is a great example of how the government is getting involved and creating these incentive programs to get enterprises more involved with this new technology. So in summary, the way I see it is that there are, there is a big inv invisible hand sort of at play here. So you see a lot of new competitors coming into space, a lot of new smart people coming into this space. And for the next couple of years, you know, we will have some winners, winners that will innovate. We will have few projects that will exit the market as well. And just like any other industry, you'll have a period of consolidation. But overall, I feel very strongly that with so much com competition coming in and so much capital coming in, we will, feel, we will do a good job of pushing this industry forward. So what is Icon doing at this current time? The way I look at it is that, so Icon, or we call it the Icon Republic, is that we are supporting a thousand blockchains. So our philosophy is to support multiple blockchain projects. And we are currently working very closely with various partners in various industries. And that is includes 
different dApp companies, different exchanges, uh, even other platforms like Aon and OneChain, governments, and even enterprises. So we have, in a way, sort of created this mini hyper-connected world to test. And we believe that this method is very beneficial in trying to increase uh, innovation at a faster rate because we could create that feedback loop and get a lot of good feedback from our partners and iterate so that we can move a lot faster. Here are some of the examples. Uh, we do, we're doing testing many, many different aspects of the technology and governance. But one of the days, ways that we're thinking about this is we see a lot of problems. And for example, proof of stake has a problem where a lot of investors are viewing cryptocurrencies as sort of dividends or you get passive income for basically staking your tokens as a deposit where you don't do anything for the ecosystem. So we see a lot of outflow of capital for, uh, for cryptocurrencies today. And how we view it is we need to fix this system. When you look at technology companies, there are no dividends or most of them don't because Technology companies like to reinvest a lot of their net profit into scaling their technology and scaling their company. Countries like Korea and China are really able to boost their economy by doing something called capital control. So a lot of that money gets reinvested into the local economy. I'm not saying Icon is trying to create capital control but we're trying to create a better incentive models so that a lot of the capital, a lot of the block rewards go back into the ecosystem to boost it a lot faster. And we call it the proof of contribution where we have a scoring system where we allocate a lot of that block rewards to people, to teams that are actually contributing to grow the ecosystem. Secondly, we have something called virtual step. Virtual step is a concept that we develop by working very, very closely with our DAP partners. The DAP partners have this issue right now where they want to minimize or mitigate transaction costs. And by staking their ICX tokens, they earn basically a loyalty reward, which we call uh, virtual step. And these virtual steps can be used against the transaction fees and minimize their transaction costs. Third, a lot of companies talk about AI and applying AI to their blockchain technology, but they don't have much experience in working with AI and blockchain. Uh, but the cool thing about ICON is that our team is currently in South Korea working with some of the largest banks to create risk reward models, basically a credit scoring models to maximize profits for, uh, for, the, for these banking institutions. And what we have learned is that we could actually apply a similar type of AI and machine learning risk reward system to our, um, to grow the icon ecosystem to maximize the growth of it. So these are some of the ways that we are thinking about uh, contributing to our ecosystem. Another thing is that icon is, has started as a Korean project, but we are going much global now. So Korea is known as one of the best test beds for companies to come in and try to test different products and services. We believe that we have enough education, we have created enough use cases to share our learnings with the rest of the world. So right now, we've created, uh, we have an office in, South, in San Francisco, we have an office in Tokyo, and we're opening an office in Singapore later this year. And the idea is we want to be able to create a cohesive community where we could share ideas and educate our community so that we could learn and grow together. And of course, ICON is very focused, even till this day, on the enterprise blockchain side. So cool, cool thing about ICON is we were able to launch a commercial version of our blockchain called Chain ID with 25 securities firms in Korea. We've also worked with the university consortium and we do a lot of this learning and we can apply them to building a better blockchain technology. And most recently, we have a contract with the Seoul Metropolitan Government where we want to bring the benefits of blockchain such as transparency to the voting systems of, to 
take democracy to the next level. So a lot of these projects, we feel by doing both enterprise blockchain and public blockchain, we can benefit by, by working a lot faster. And lastly, because we have so many partners, both in enterprise side and on the public side, we're able to build blockchain technology and architecture, thinking, having for interoperability. So keeping that interoperability in mind. So on top here, we have a common or shared consensus structure. And at the bottom, right below it, we have a connector platform that connects and links our enterprise blockchain to our public blockchain. So coming up with an architecture like this, you know, we believe that we, we can only do through a lot of the feedback loop and through the learning process that we're doing with both the enterprise side and the public side. And we've built our blockchain technology from ground up. We control the full stack, which means we are able to work with our partners and tweak our model, tweak our technology so it could better serve our partners, not only from the enterprise side, but on the blockchain, uh, public side as well. So that's it from me. Thank you for your time. Really appreciate uh, the opportunity to come here and speak with you guys. Uh, one last announcement is that we are giving out a, the new iPhone. Uh, so please stop by our booth, which is just around the corner, booth number one. And again, thank you for your time.